This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Today is Thursday, July 30th, 2020. My name is the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. This week we're talking about, and indeed trying out, spiritual practices. Spiritual practices ask us to slow down, to ground ourselves in place and time, to get in touch of whatever our conception of the divine is and the ground of our being. We've talked about meditation and prayer, and today I want to spend some time with a practice of sacred reading. In our tradition of Unitarian Universalism, we have a broad conception of scripture. The canon of Unitarian Universalism is limitless. It's well within the bounds of our theology to claim that we cannot indeed put bounds on where or what is divinely inspired. But it is worth thinking about. What is the nature of scripture? What makes it different than literature? Many, many things. But one is this, we read scripture differently. When we read scripture, we don't read for content. The book of Genesis makes basically no sense as a coherent history but it does share the rhythms of poetry. Scripture is experience. By coming to it over and over, we start to see patterns, metaphor, moments of clarity and moments of tension that aren't apparent if we're just reading to find out what happens to who and how. It's a skill. It's very much a practice, like everything that we've been talking about this week. And there are a lot of different ways to do it, to engage in scripture. But for today, we'll engage with the text using the form of Lectio Divina. Now, Lectio comes out of the Christian contemplative tradition, but since we aren't in fact Benedictines, the scripture we'll use is a piece by the Unitarian Universalist minister, Victoria Safford. And this practice happens in four parts. The first is Lectio, literally reading. Often, if you're doing this for real, it's multiple times in multiple voices. And the second of the four is meditatio, ruminating, finding one phrase that speaks to you and then sitting with it. Then, oratio, prayer, speech in response. And then contemplatio, we end in silence, remaining ourselves and the ground of our being. So we'll do that now. And first I'll read this piece once out loud. There's a link to it in the description of the video. If you'd like to pull that up and follow along, there'll be prompts for you to read it yourself as well later on. But for right now, this is The Gold Stars and the Bittersweet. One afternoon, someone left a strange and beautiful message scotch-taped to the office door. The author didn't even leave a name, though I knew who it was. Her message simply said, I forgot to tell you when we met this morning. There are little gold stars all amongst the bittersweet. It's all there, mixed together. I had just met with this person who was not quite in crisis but dancing on the edge, talking and weeping and raging through one of those hard, hard moments that can last for weeks or months or years. It was painful stuff, faced with courage. Here, hours later, was this slightly mysterious, elegant message, and I thought how amazing it is that some people can render even the most desperate experience poetically, and what a gift that is, this making of art out of ashes, and how rare. I was very moved. The next day, there came a second message from the same person on the answering machine, slightly altering my view of things. It's me again, calling back about the stars and bittersweet. I forgot to tell you, I stuffed it all in garbage bags, and they're in the closet in the social hall. Those berries make an awful mess. Well, there's not much poetry in that. As it turns out, there were no metaphors at work at all. Before our appointment that morning, this person had been cleaning up after a church party for which the decorations had included branches of cut bittersweet from members' autumn gardens 
and long lengths of gold tinsel wire to which tiny metal stars were fixed. So it really was all garbage. But I'm intrigued by conversations and by language that can speak of trash bags, closets, golden stars, and bittersweet, and refer with equal accuracy to the very depths of human hope and suffering, or to the details of a committee cleanup. And I know that I am called, and I suspect we are all called, to places where the sacred and the ordinary are all mixed up together, where work is prayer, and prayer is song, and songs are sacraments, and sacraments are silent, or spoken brokenly in message we sometimes barely comprehend, in words we speak in love to one another and to the golden stars. The second step of this practice of sacred reading is to read it again, but this time to meditate on it. So read it to yourself. The text is linked in the video description and try to find one phrase to meditate on, to ruminate on. And go ahead and pause the video while you do this. And now speak the third piece of the sacred re reading is prayer. So like we did yesterday, speak about why that phrase was the one you ruminated on. You could do this silently or aloud, but imagine that you are talking to someone other than yourself. So pause the video for a moment to take time to just do that for a few minutes. And the last step is contemplation. Because we know that speech is both the sound and the time in between sounds. To understand words, there is also silence. So we end in silence, just for a few moments. Reflect on what this, meeting mean, what this reading meant for you and how you connect with it. And then go forth. Tomorrow we'll wrap up this conversation about spiritual practices by talking about the Sabbath. See you then.